Many places in China continue to suffer from hail and floods. Houses are flooded, farmland is destroyed, many people have been washed away by floods, and there are heavy casualties. The authorities have concealed the truth. In Liaoning, many places have suffered heavy rains, and the reservoirs have released floodwaters, causing bridges to collapse and villages to be flooded and washed away. Some villagers have climbed to rooftops to ask for help. Meanwhile, in Beijing, on the afternoon of August 23rd, a heavy rain fell in Miyun, causing many large trees along the road to be uprooted and fall, damaging nearby cars. Many areas in Beijing were submerged in water. A video posted online by a local resident in Miyun shows a row of large trees planted along Guoyuan West Road, near the Miyun Brewery in Beijing, with cars parked along the roadside. At around 4 p.m. on the 23rd, heavy rain fell in Miyun for half an hour, causing many large trees to fall and hit cars on the roadside. Some residents left messages. It's scary. Many trees along the river fell. Many fell into the river. Liaoning has experienced continuous heavy rains in recent days, and many reservoirs have opened their gates to release floodwaters. Five towns in Jianchang County, Huludao City, were flooded on the 20th, and communications have been interrupted since then. Ms. Wang, a villager in Jianchang County said, when the reservoir released water, it was like a big wave, flooding, soaking, and rushing. We are homeless. The reservoir was contracted to someone. Why didn't they release water earlier? They were afraid of fish losses. The water level rose and they had to release water. They started to release water. Mr. Hua, another villager in Jianchang County said, Yang Shuan was devastated. All the houses are gone. The feed and corn are all soaked. All the harvests are lost. The house is full of mud. The cattle sheds were all washed away. The losses are huge. We need rescue, but we can't get it. There's no water, no electricity, no place to eat, no place to stay. It's really miserable. The official casualties were not reported. The flood discharge of Baishi Reservoir, upstream of Daling River, once reached 500 cubic meters per second, while the outflow of Yuanbaoshan Reservoir, upstream of Shaoling River, reached 1,000 cubic meters per second. Many places downstream were flooded. Mrs. Guo, a villager in Jiangshang County said, the village is full of water and silt and the river embankments have all been washed away. The courtyard walls and gates are gone and the house is flooded, but that's not a big deal. Many houses have been washed away and everything is gone. The cornfields are full of water and the corn is soaked. Today is the early autumn harvest. If we don't act now, it will sprout. Mr. Yang, a resident of Chaoyang said, water and electricity are cut off and we are out of contact. Many villages have been washed away. The whole village has been washed away. Houses have collapsed and villagers from several villages have been washed away, but there is no official report. The Baishi Reservoir, Jinling Reservoir and Wujintang Reservoir of the Daling River downstream of Chaoyang City, simultaneously released floodwaters. Jinzhou City is in a state of emergency. Since the 21st, roads have been closed and people are working from home. Affected by this round of heavy rains, Anshan, Fushun, Yingku, and Dandong areas were also severely affected and many trains were canceled. In addition, Typhoon Shanshan Shan has formed, and it is expected that the southeastern coast of the mainland will experience heavy to torrential rains. At the same time, Tongchuan and Yan'an and Shanxi were hit by heavy hail. The hail poured down and instantly covered the roads and courtyards, making it look like snow. Crops suffered heavy losses, and people were in tears. People in the disaster area said, hail, the apples are almost gone. A resident of Shanxi said, My colleagues' 10 acres of apples, which were going to be sold tomorrow, were hit by hail today, and they were particularly badly damaged. Wensu County, Xinjiang, issued an orange hail warning. In the next few days, some parts of Guangxi and Hunan will still experience heavy rain and thunderstorms. Guangdong was hit by heavy rain again, 
and more than 90 rainstorm warnings were issued in succession. Guangzhou's Zhengcheng, Baiyun, Tianhe, Yuexiu, and other urban areas had heavy rain, turning many streets into rivers. Cars and low-lying houses were submerged. Trains were delayed on a large scale. Flights were delayed. Scenic spots were closed. Drainage systems failed. Electric vehicles were turned off. Shops were closed. And the whole city was in chaos. Due to continuous heavy rains, many towns and villages, including Meizhou and Huizhou, were flooded. Crops were soaked in water for many days, and farmers suffered heavy losses. The world is abandoning China. Foreigners left China. In addition to the efforts to attract foreign investment, the article also underscores the alarming unemployment situation in China. Data from the National Immigration Administration shows a 15% decrease in the issuance of various types of residence permits to foreigners compared to pre-pandemic levels last year, along with a significant drop by two-thirds in the number of short-term tourists, including business travelers, during the same period. I'm currently at Beijing Capital International Airport. It's evening at the T3 International Departures Area, and basically all the shops are closed. You can't even find a place to eat noodles, only a Costa, a Starbucks, and a duty-free shop are open. There are very few people, it's indeed quite bleak. It reminds me of many friends who have contacted me, saying that the economic situation here is not good. You see, this year's business situation isn't just about how hard you work. Even if you put in all your effort, you still might not make money. Look at the streets, cleaner than a dog licks. You might have the drive to work hard but there's nowhere to apply it. Business in recent years hasn't been as good as during the pandemic, slightly better. To be honest, for supermarket owners like us during those pandemic years, business was all right. We thought, once the pandemic ends, maybe 2023 will be better. But 2023 turned out worse than the pandemic period. And what's even more surprising is that 2024 is worse than 2023. I don't know if you feel the same, but it's deeply felt. You know? Have you noticed fewer people on the streets after each holiday? With a population of 1.4 billion, if you go out now, you'll see fewer and fewer people. The physical condition of the economy is really tough. There are various reasons, empty pockets, no money, low wages, difficulty finding jobs in all sectors, pressures from mortgages, car loans, and, uh, the rise of online shopping, community buying, and various platforms. This has made it really hard for physical stores to survive. Following the usual practice, the first important political event for China's premier after the two sessions is the development forum held at the end of March, where he meets with CEOs of major multinational companies. Last Tuesday, Reuters learned that, similar to not holding press conferences after the two sessions, Li Cheng announced early that he would not meet with these business elites. This caused quite a stir in the overseas news community. Early yesterday morning, the Wall Street Journal published a lengthy article, analyzing who would meet with the CEOs at the forum. By noon, the Wall Street Journal, which is always well informed about internal Chinese politics, broke an exclusive news story that this time, Xi Jinping himself will personally direct and deploy, bare-chested, to meet with CEOs, using his personal charm and authority to attract foreign investors and stabilize foreign capital. As the owner of a small shop, I'm seeing some issues in the market. People aren't spending much, and they're nowhere to be found. Today, our sales were only 500 yuan, and I even exchanged 200 yuan in cash. Finally, someone came in, another liquor salesman. I explained that my rural shop doesn't sell much liquor, so he should try the supermarket next door. He replied, they've sold out. Haven't moved anything since unloading before the new year haven't even unpacked a single item. Might have to skip lunch. I advised him not to run around so much since there's no shortage of goods in the market, wasting fuel. He said, nowadays, even though goods aren't selling, manufacturers still have quotas to meet, and they can't guarantee their basic salary. It's true. This year's situation is unusual. When I went to the wholesale market this morning, it was eerily quiet. The wholesalers mentioned there weren't many purchases today. Just after the new year, things really aren't selling. Have you noticed a problem? Business at the beginning of this year has been particularly poor, and this is not just reflected in our direct distributors. Inside the factories, I went to our country's largest production area, Gowan, yesterday, and so far, the production rate hasn't been very high. 
The main reason is that the customers' warehouses are full of goods, while the distributors at the end of the chain are struggling. The information I received is that a warehouse with a dozen or so people might have sales of over 10,000 yuan on a good day, but on bad days, they might not even reach 10,000. Some factories have already started bargaining on prices for the middlemen. What could be the reason for this? In my opinion, firstly, many people believe that there's a shortage of land this year, so there's been a decrease in construction activity. Secondly, the overall economy is still in the process of recovery. What do you think? Youth unemployment issue in China is becoming increasingly severe, with many highly educated young people struggling to find desirable positions. Consequently, many are turning their attention to civil service jobs. Recently, 25 provinces in China have opened registrations for civil service exams. According to official data released, the number of people participating in civil service exams this year has reached 5.67 million. A few days ago, I fell for a scam again. I got an internship nearby because it was convenient for me. Though the pay wasn't great, I took it to finish my internship quickly. I worked there for three days, and last night, they told me to quit without paying. They said the first three days were unpaid probation, but during the interview, they assured me there wasn't any probation period, once hired, it was confirmed. I sensed something was off right from the start. The company had interviews daily, but never hired anyone. Later, I realized it wasn't a proper company, but more like a casual dance training place. Worried it might not be legit, I recorded customer inquiries as they often badmouth them behind their backs. On my resignation night, when they didn't pay and blocked me, I took action. I reported them for unpaid wages, and it worked, they paid me immediately. Standing up for yourself is key, you need to be firm for them to listen. They threatened me afterward, but I remained calm, reminding them I had evidence. The defamation lawsuit process would take time, maybe a year, before they received any summons. I also warned them that once I got the summons, I'd make all evidence public. I wished them luck, and they went silent. As of now, I've successfully defended my rights. According to the Wall Street Journal's exclusive report, Chinese President Xi Jinping plans to meet with a group of American business leaders next week after a government-hosted forum. With the backdrop of outflows of foreign capital, the Chinese government is intensifying efforts to attract American companies. Informed sources say that the meeting with China's top leaders is scheduled for next Wednesday. Evan Greenberg, CEO of insurance company AIG, Stephen Orlands, President of the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations, and Craig Allen, President of the U.S.-China Business Council, are expected to attend. The list of attendees is still being finalized. Informed sources say that the Chinese government may also cancel Xi Jinping's meeting at the last minute. Last March, only 23 business leaders from American companies attended the meeting. This year, it is expected that over 85 executives will attend, with 34 coming from American multinational companies. Expected attendees include CEOs such as Tim Cook of Apple, Stephen Schwartzman of Blackstone Group, Ken Griffin of Hedge Fund Citadel, and Noel Quinn of HSBC Holdings. Li Chang stepped aside, and President Xi personally took the stage, which can be interpreted as Xi Jinping once again declaring to the outside world that he is the sole decision-maker in China. However, another dilemma that cannot be ignored is that since last year, there has been a gradual withdrawal of foreign capital. Despite China unilaterally lifting visa restrictions on multiple countries, it has not only failed to attract a wave of foreigners entering the country, but also seen a gradual disappearance of foreigners who were originally in the country. Perhaps Xi Jinping is truly anxious. The title of an article in the Wall Street Journal is China attempts to attract foreigners back, but the halo of the past has faded away. The report states that to break free from years of isolation due to the pandemic, the Chinese government is launching a charm offensive in hopes of attracting foreigners back. However, the current wave of charm offensive by the CCP may be more difficult to succeed. In recent months, China has simplified visa procedures for business travelers and tourists, reduced visa fees, and even implemented visa waivers for some countries. China has also continued its preferential tax policies to enhance the attractiveness of living in China for foreign nationals. Premier Li Keqiang promised earlier this month at the National People's Congress to take more measures to re-establish the Invest in China brand. With Xi Jinping prioritizing security, the Chinese government severed ties with other countries during the pandemic. However, this recent charm offensive indicates that China is striving to restore its connections with countries worldwide. Nowadays, China is trying to re-attract foreigners to return, but times have changed.
Not only is the domestic economy slowing down, but the government is also tightening its control over society. In Washington, more and more people are skeptical about dealing with China. Influenced by China's dynamic zero-tolerance policy and nationwide anti-spying campaign, distrust of the Chinese government persists. A U.S. corporate executive said that an incident in mid-2023 made him uneasy. One evening, nine policemen appeared at his doorstep in Beijing, demanding to check his passport and confirm his employer. One of the policemen even used a smartphone to record the interaction between them. These policemen did not explain why they appeared at his doorstep. The executive said, it will take a long time to restore the trust that has been damaged in recent years. You must be careful if you want to travel in China. The fact that there are so many scams in China. Have you read the news? Let me share my first-hand experience, which aligns with the reported incident. A tourist diving in Sanya was asked by the instructor if he wanted to pay for photos. He declined, but the instructor forcefully removed his mask underwater, nearly causing him to drown. Similarly, during my dive in Sanya, the instructor pressured me to pay extra for a full face mask. Upon refusal, he abruptly pushed me underwater, resulting in me swallowing a large amount of seawater. Feeling frustrated, I eventually agreed to pay extra to stop the ordeal. Subsequently, the instructor demanded even more money for photos, totaling an additional 600 yuan. The water was murky, and the photos turned out terribly. In summary, my diving experience in Sanya was extremely disappointing, and I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. The speaker reflects on the irony of being in a hotel after spending a considerable amount of money yet still feeling dissatisfied. They express sympathy for someone else's plight, contrasting their own situation with that of another person or group. There's also mention of participating in a shopping tour and observing others' behavior, highlighting differences in attitude and experience. Now at the airport in Wuhan, these scammers are everywhere, especially numerous. They're con artists, dressing and appearing just like airline staff. In reality, they're from a credit card company. This practice has disappeared elsewhere, but in Wuhan, there are still many. Yesterday, while I was in Shaolu village, located in Huashi County, Hunan province, I accidentally collided with a tree and were asked to pay 2,000 yuan in compensation. We found ourselves unable to leave as we were blocked by others. Even after offering compensation, they insisted on detaining us. They instructed us not to remain in our vehicle and suggested we find alternative transportation, such as taking a bus. We promptly reported the incident to the police and underwent insurance procedures for three hours. Upon the arrival of law enforcement to document the scene, they directed us to the police station with assurances of resolution within 24 hours. However, nearing midnight, they claimed to be overwhelmed and requested our return at 8 a.m. the following morning. Upon our return, we provided our statements, only to be informed that an additional 10 working days would be required for further investigation. As non-locals with plans to depart for Hangzhou in just two days, a distance of over 800 kilometers away, it is impractical for us to return. Are there any nearby acquaintances who could lend us assistance? We are prepared to issue a power of attorney. Your aid would be greatly appreciated. According to data from the National Immigration Administration, China issued various types of residence permits to foreigners 711,000 times last year, a 15% decrease from before the pandemic in 2019. The number of short-term tourists, including business travelers, saw an even larger decrease, dropping by two-thirds during the same period. The challenges facing Shanghai are particularly evident. As a financial center, Shanghai used to be a vibrant city that attracted people from all walks of life. Official data shows that the number of new work permits for foreigners in Shanghai decreased from about 70,000 in 2020 to 50,000 in 2022. Graham Allen, an Irishman who runs an Irish-style pub in Shanghai, said, When we go to restaurants and malls on weekends, usually, I'm the only white person there. By the end of March this year, the number of round-trip flights between China and the United States may increase from the current 35 to 50. However, diplomats and business consultants say that even with a substantial increase in flights, it cannot solve fundamental changes. It is these fundamental changes that have led to a decline in foreign interest in China. Nowadays, many multinational companies are beginning to relocate their businesses outside of China to diversify. Cameron Johnson, a supply chain consultant in Shanghai, said, If you're a foreigner with a family and want to develop your career, you no longer need to stay in China because your destination is now Southeast Asia, India, or the Middle East. People leave, and money follows.
The Ministry of Commerce of China stated in January that the actual use of foreign capital in China last year decreased by 8% compared to the previous year, to about $157 billion, marking the first decline in 10 years. China is increasingly seen as a source of risk. Sean Stein, a senior consultant providing advice to companies on regulatory and legal risks, said, In the past, there were many opportunities in China, and ambitious executives competed to come to China. Now, people don't see the benefits of coming to China.